Good evening. We're glad you've joined us this evening for the Berean Perspective Bible Study. I'm Minister Gwen, First Lady of Emmanuel Community Church. Tonight, we continue our teaching series on the believer's spiritual gifts with a focus on the gift of administration and leadership. Joining us again tonight is Mrs. Yvonne Dunnigan. She is one of the Bible study small group teachers at Emmanuel Community Church. We'll begin by reading the text, especially for the new viewers. We begin with the basic text for our study. So I'm going to ask you, Ms. Dunnigan, if you will read the basic text. There are four of them. I would love, you know I love the Word of God, so of course I will read the text for you. So we're going to start off with four basic scriptures that define the text of study that we're doing tonight. The first one is Romans 12, 6. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. The second scripture is Romans 12, 8. Or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. The third scripture is 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all these, all things in all persons. The last scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then the gifts of healings, helps, administration, and various kinds of tongues. Thank you, Teacher Yvonne. Now we go to the definitions for uh, tonight's study. Again, it is the gift of administration and leadership. <clears throat> so the meaning of the gift of administration, there are two. Greek words used in our text for tonight's lesson, and they both mean to rule or to govern. The word used in Romans 12.8 for leads is proistaminos, proistaminos, a hard Greek word. <laughs> but anyway, it means to put before, to be at the head, to set over, to rule or direct, to manage or conduct. Mm -hmm. This is a rich study tonight, and we're going to see these examples, in both practically and also biblically. The second word is used in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, mm -hmm. for administrations. And that word is kuber nesis, kuber nesis another bad Greek word, <laughs> but anyway, that's what it is. And it means to steer or to be a helmsman. Mm -hmm. It means government. To break it down a little bit more, this person gives guidance in church matters. They cause direction. Mm -hmm. They speak up with confidence when decisions need to be made. And they may also establish policy to get a job done. Since the words are different used in these passages uh, that list the gifts, some say mm -hmm. that they mean different things. However, a close study seems to indicate that they are synonymous. The definitions are distinct, mm -hmm. but the functionality 
in the church is strikingly similar. Those with these gifts, the gift of leadership mm -hmm. or administration, whichever word you'd like to use, okay, they are able to manage groups and administer programs in the church in an effective manner. They also may be able to manage a program and to carry out a task that needs to be done in order to serve the church. So hopefully we'll see some of that as we go along. Their duties and abilities include recruiting, mm -hmm. organizing, training, motivating, and supervising the execution of the duties of the group of people that they are responsible for. Now, I'm going to ask Ms. Dunnigan if she will go to the designations and we begin to show you some examples of leadership in action. First in the scriptures, Ms. Dunnigan. Okay, so we will begin reading. Nehemiah oversees the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah was employed in the play in the palace of the king of Persia as a favorite servant to the king. Upon hearing of the return of Jerusalem of the Jews, he had escaped captivity. He became concerned about the conditions of the city. Yes. The gate of the city had been burned and the wall was in disrepair, making the city without defense. So Nehemiah prayed fervently, confessing the sins of the nation of Israel, interceding for the city of Jerusalem. The spirit of the Lord rested upon him and guided him. He was burdened with the desire to go into the city in order to make it safe, a safe place for the people of God. He approached the king of Persia and requested a leave of absence, as well as permission to request supplies for the project that he was working on from the king's subjects. His requests were granted by the king. Our first text informs us of his inspection mm -hmm. of the city and the beginning of the work of the rebuilding. So I'm going to summarize this just a little bit. I want to highlight some things in this section. If you notice in this section that Nehemiah was a favored servant of a secular king. The point that I'm making is that you as Christians mm -hmm. can, be, can be a Christian and work for a secular person or an organization and still do your job well. He was a favorite person of the king. He did his job and the king was well pleased with him. And then he found favor of the king to even be able to ask the king mm -hmm. for supplies to build um, protection for the Jews. Another thing about the leaders is that uh, they are burdened a lot of times by concerns spiritually that others are not. Mm -hmm. We discuss that. Mm -hmm. And remember that they are watching out for your souls. So this Nehemiah was very concerned about what was happening to the people, uh, the Jewish people. And he was not afraid to go before the king mm -hmm. to do what God had asked him to do. Right, okay, so we're talking about Nehemiah chapter 2? Yes. Verses 11? And I will continue. Through 18? Yes. Okay. Nehemiah 2, 11 through 18. I will continue to read. So, I came to Jerusalem, and this is Nehemiah speaking, and was there three days. And I arose in the night, and I and a few men with me. I did not tell anyone what my God was putting in my mind to do for Jerusalem. And there was no animals with me except the animal 
um, that I was riding on. Mm -hmm. So I went out at night by the valley gate in the direction of the dragon well and on the refuse gate, inspecting the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and its gates which were consumed by fire. Then I passed on to the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was no place for my, for my mount to pass. So I went up at night by the ravine and inspected the wall. Then I entered the valley gate again and returned. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done, nor had I yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the rest who did the work. Then I said to them, you see the bad news we are in, that Jerusalem is desolate and its gates burned by fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we will no longer be a reproach. I told them how the hand of my God had been favorable to me and also about the king's words which had spoke which he had spoken to me they said let us arise and build so they put their hands to the good work there was much opposition to the effect to rebuild the gates and the wall of the city but the leadership and administrative skills of Nehemiah were more than adequate to get the job done. And I'm going to read Nehemiah 4, 6. So we built the wall, and the whole wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Mm -hmm. And in summary, Minister Gwen, yes. when leaders who are touched by God get a group of people together to do a job, and their minds are changed to trust God with a will to do the work mm -hmm. ahead. There will be a better end. And that's even with opposition. So even when we face opposition, we don't stop. Nehemiah uh, had opposition, mm -hmm. especially from two gentlemen, San Ballot mm -hmm. and Tobiah. They were men that were against him building the wall. But Nia knew what he had heard from God, mm -hmm. and he continued on with the work. So please know that your gift is not less effective just because you have opposition. And the power of the Holy Spirit will help you to do your job he has meant for you to do. So there's no stopping. When God tells us to do something, he's going to help us finish it. And so don't think it's strange Mm -hmm. If opposition come your way, mm -hmm. uh, Minister Gwen and I discussed last night mm -hmm. that Jesus said that, you know, that yes. people hated him yes. and they were going to hate us. Exactly. But we are to trust God at all times. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you, Teacher Yvonne. I'm reminded, as you said, that uh, Proverbs 11, 14, that mm -hmm. says, without a leader, the people fail. Mm -hmm. And yes. so those people would not have been successful and nothing was happening with the gates or That's the walls right. That's right. before the leader who wasn't even there had a mind yes. to say, put God's city back mm -hmm. together. Yes. Let's fortify mm -hmm. that city. It, God's house, God's house, God's church, yes. God's area, the thing that worships him, it's unprotected. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a leader in the church, a spiritual leader, will always be concerned, always be looking at, yes. observing what is going on with God. He was already comfortable. He was in the palace. Yes. He was with a ruler, mm -hmm. and he had jurisdiction. He had leadership. So if that was his concern, he wouldn't have went back there That's and right. suffered what he su suffered. Right. But he had the burden to please God. Yes, he did. And that's the beautiful thing. When you are a spiritual leader mm -hmm. and you have that gift of leadership, you almost are never without a burden <laughs> to make things better yes. for God. And you don't worry about 
and shrink back Correct. because there might be opposition. opposition. Mm -hmm. There's going to be. Yeah. I'll guarantee you. If you read <laughs> so, the word of God, you'll yeah. find out. Yeah. But that can't deter you. And if you're a gifted spiritual leader, it won't deter you. No. It won't deter you. Okay, so Amen. thank you, Amen. Teacher Yvonne. You're welcome. We're going to look at, uh, we're going to actually see Paul in two places mm -hmm. tonight in leadership. But this one here is where he is instructing the elders at Ephesus. And he loved them dearly, and he didn't want to leave them. And when you are a gifted leader, mm -hmm. you care about the people either that participate in leadership with you. Yes. Yeah or the people that you lead. Mm -hmm. You don't want to separate from that relationship. Didn't we see that in Jesus? We did. When he came, <laughs> he, he didn't want to leave that comfort and the relationship that he had had with the Father before he came down here. But nonetheless, he had to do the yeah. Father's will. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. Amen. So now we're going to look at, we're going to be in Acts chapter 20. And we're going to start at verse 17. And while you're turning, I'll give a little background. The Apostle Paul instructs the elders at Ephesus regarding their administration and oversight. Paul had previously spent two years building a church in the city of Ephesus. And in that time, he had organized that church and set up order yeah. with officials and people in positions that were going to help the church be built and be edified and run smoothly. That's what the apostles did. Mm -hmm. They came in where there wasn't a church, they set it up, yeah. they put the people in place, and then they moved on to the next place. We've been seeing that as we went along. But he appointed leaders in that church uh, to oversee the proper functioning of that ministry there. Yes. And while on a missionary journey in the region, he sent for those leaders in the church in order to admonish. And we think of that term as we discussed yes. as a negative term. It can be, but it also is a good term. It can mean to warn yes. and it can mean to strongly advise. And if you're a leader, talking to those you lead and you're going to leave them in charge mm -hmm. to be leaders, it can empower. Yes, absolutely. Especially if it's guided mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. And so we will see that that is just what he did. He admonished them regarding their duties as administrators and spiritual leaders in the ministry there. So I begin at verse 17 and then I will go to verse 25 through 28 for this example. From Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called to him the elders of the church. Verse 25, and now behold, I know that all of you among whom I went about preaching the kingdom will no longer see my face. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. In other words, what he was saying is, I discharged the duty that God gave me to do. Since I became a Christian and recognized my calling, yes. I have discharged that duty. Because we know he wasn't always doing good for yes. the Christians. Okay, right. He was on the other side <laughs> as a hostile person at That's one time. Right. Verse 27, uh, for I did not shrink mm. from declaring to you the whole purpose yeah. of God. Be on guard for yourselves. That's an appropriate thing for a leader to say yeah. to others that he leads or that he serves or that she leads or that she serves. Be on That's guard. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to build people up. You want to prepare them when you can. When you know, yes. then you let them know. Mm -hmm. Right? Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock. Don't just look at only, only yourselves. yourselves. Look out for all the flock. That sounds like Peter, too. Yes, in First mm -hmm. Peter chapter 5, he says, Shepherd the, the flock, flock of God right. and give oversight 
according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. That's in 1 Peter 5. We're not going there, but you can yeah. go there, okay? <laughs> Be on guard for yourselves and all the flock of God among which the Holy Spirit, I love it. Yes. God has given yes. us his yes. spirit that makes the difference. Yes. We're going to see that tonight. I'm so yes. excited. Okay. <laughs> among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. blood. Yes. Yes. So we are so happy that God put these examples in the Bible so that if we feel a call mm -hmm. to leadership, if you feel a call, read the word of God and look at the people doing those jobs yes. and see how they responded to God. See how they responded to the people who responded to them and then see how they responded when they did get opposition as you so yes. well read about Nehemiah. Yes. Okay? And then get your orders from the word That's of God. Right. And also, if you have good mentors, good pastor, good elders, good leaders in your church, then listen to them as well. Okay? All right. Now, Ms. Dunnigan, yes. I would like us to go ahead and share some practical examples of leadership in this church, yes. Emmanuel Community Church. We thought that might be insightful for you to know a little bit about some practical leadership in this church. So okay. I'm going to ask you if you would address the hostesses in our church. Yes, when we talk about these ladies because we don't have gentlemen yet we have no we have our <laughs> ushers but we yeah. have um, these ladies i am always pleased uh with them and how they t how well they take their job mm -hmm. um of serving god seriously um i do want to discuss let's let's read a little bit and then i can share my vision of what sure. I see with them. Sure. Uh, this person, uh, we're talking about the hostess committee chairperson. Yes. Uh, this person is responsible for the leadership and management of a group of people in the church that officially greet people at church services. Mm -hmm. They ensure that their staff displays the right attitude mm -hmm. and have a proper appearance. Yes. They oversee the preparation and the serving of food for luncheons and other church events mm -hmm. involving food. Some of their tasks include sanitation, table setting, food decoration, food proportioning, and seating. Mm -hmm. And just to give you an example of our church chairperson, our committee mm -hmm. chairperson, hostess, when I think about her, I've known her for over 20 something years. Wow. But she is always saying, how can I serve you? She considers herself a servant. She considers herself a servant of God, yes. um, a servant of the people and the church of God. And she is very particular mm -hmm. about things, um, the, the way they appear, how you dress, Yes. how you stand at the door, how you smile, how you greet. She's always concerned about that. When it comes to serving, everything must look beautiful, mm -hmm. all the flowers on the table, all the, everything about it, she just wants it to appear um, clean and wholesome and ready mm -hmm. for those who are entering the room. And, and then just the love that she cares for the women. I mean, that is one of the committees that most people flock to when they first get here. They want uh, to join. And she yeah. is she welcomes them in. And so and then, you know, they learn to serve and learn to serve the people. So every time I think about her, it's always brings a joy to my face uh, when I think about Miss Northy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Well, tell us a little bit then about uh, the discipleship and leadership there. I sure will. So this team um, designs and executes training, a training program for lay people in the church to learn a systematic Bible, to do, learn to do systematic Bible study. 
uh, apply the scriptures to their everyday lives, Minister Gwen, and mm -hmm. how to pass information, that information on to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, the trainees are accountable to leadership through weekly meetings and periodic evaluations that measure the trainees' progress. Mm -hmm. So this is a program um, that has come along and many uh, people were hesitant mm -hmm. at first about right. you know, learning the Bible and just leading other people. But once we demonstrated to them that what we were doing was what Christ was, would do yes. and what Christ did yes. do and the example that we had from Christ. Um, I can tell you here, this is a loving church. So people really got on the program and really started seeing where they were at the beginning and then to grow yes. after months yes. and be willing. They were willing, I'm willing, what can I do to serve? And willing. so they were willing to take on other responsibility mm -hmm. of teaching others Christ's way. And um, we're really excited about that. We had graduates from that and yes. graduations from that and just people moving on yes. to teach other people the same that they learned. So it was exciting, exciting time. Yes. yes. Both of these groups are really uh, key groups in the church that help people grow and help them to uh, overcome uh, yes. apprehension yes. and overcome feeling inadequate in the church yes. because we come from all walks of life and we come into the church with our experiences mm -hmm. and we don't know how we're going to be received that's right but both of these groups have been successful would you say yes. in helping people to overcome discouragement and really be encouraged yes. and now some of those people encourage others with boldness yes they do and they <laughs> are not afraid to say yes I'll be there yes. yes okay there needs to be a repast somebody lost a, a bereavement yes I know that uh, Miss Norphy who's the leader of the hostesses she can call her hostesses and say can you be there on Tuesday or can you be there on Saturday? We need four people yes. to do the work of ministry. Ministry is work, but it's service. It's service unto the Lord first. And these people have the servant's heart. Yes, a they want to see the people blessed. Yes. And that stems from the leader. Mm -hmm. That's what she wants. She's not afraid to get in there. These leaders are not afraid, you yourself. Yes are not afraid to get in there and lead out. You lead out by doing, but you also lead out by showing, showing. and telling. Yes. You lead out by <laughs> communicating. You lead out by organizing. And so, uh, and one thing that I will say that's really, really great about the hostess leader is that she's not afraid to leave them in charge. That's right. As a great leader, you've got to be able to trust your people. And you have to trust God and trust the Holy Spirit in order to trust the people. Absolutely. Otherwise, how are they going to develop? Yes. You yes. see? Yes. And how are they going to know when God is using them? Mm -hmm. And so it's so wonderful, isn't it, Ms. Dunnigan, when we hear the lay people who have now been through, say, six mm -hmm. months or a year yes. of training mm -hmm. in discipleship, and they are amazed that God spoke to them. Yes. <laughs> through the word that they got new revelation, yes. not new in the sense that nobody ever yes. heard it, right. but in the sense that now they could they read something see. on their mm -hmm. own and without the teacher being there, they knew how to get the interpretation yes. and apply it to their lives and incorporate it. And not only that, to teach it to, to, someone, teach else, it to someone else, that's the power. Yeah. Of, of the God. Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's the power of yes, God. Yes, beautiful. Yes, I love beautiful. It. Yes. Well, thank you so much for that. We're going to look at one other group, uh, church group. And that's our church leadership council. That's what we call it here. And actually, that is a group. Um, it's a rather large group. And it's the leaders of all the auxiliaries in our church. Yes. And one group in particular I'm thinking of that's led by uh, one of our uh, RNs is the health and medical team yes. mm -hmm. is in this group. And that lady, I don't know how she does it, but 
whenever there's a task that has to be done, this particular leader who participates in this leadership group, she is always comes with a smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like Ms. Norphy and yourself yes. as well. But you say, well, we need to plan an agenda to, to a program of health. Yes. Uh, we want to <laughs> learn about nutrition. Uh, you know, we want to learn our blender's good, yes. blending our food. Is that good for <laughs> us? You know, I don't know. Yes. But she goes right to work. And her and her team, and her team, I believe on her team is uh, a, a, a supervisor who's a supervisor of a large uh, HMO. Yes in Southern California, but she also is an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. okay, of her own home health care yes. business, mm -hmm. okay. One of them is a, uh, a blood specialist yes. and a lab supervisor, and she's an MD. Yes. And you know what? The people on this team, they care so much about this congregation. Do you know if we are intimidated because we're going to talk to our doctor about mm -hmm. important things that we can call our team and say would you go with us yes and our team <laughs> will go with us and be right up in there how valuable is that to have an md go with you to see an md <laughs> okay or to see a specialist so i am so proud of the leader of that team and actually that's a plurality yes. of leadership, which I'm going to get into. So leaders also have to be able to work together, That's right. like you and I. Mm -hmm. There is no room for egos. That's right. You know what egos are, right? Yes. There's no room for trying to get your personal applause. Mm -hmm. Because in the church of God, there are varieties of gifts, yes. and everyone is necessary. Absolutely. Even the ones that we think are less or God says may even be, be more, more valuable. Mm -hmm. You see? They are. <laughs> so that is so very important. We're trying to really be conversational with you as we speak on this gift and not just limit it to the, uh, the, the written definitions. We're just trying to show you how it plays out practically in a church. And we do have a loving church. And people that say that they come here, they say that they feel that when they come in. Yes. Uh, from our greeters, our hostess at the door, to our ushers, uh, to our communion leaders, to uh, the spiritual leaders yes. uh, at the end of service, to, to all of the auxiliaries. And so we have such wonderful cooperation in this church leadership council that I'm talking about because we all come together and they have their reports. They report on what they're doing. So that's another thing. As a leader, you must be accountable. There's accountability to leadership. Yes. And when someone doesn't want to be accountable, that kind of is problematic, or at least it's an indication of where they might be spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because in the Bible, there is accountability, accountability all the way through the scriptures. There was accountability in Nehemiah's day. Yes, it was. He was accountable. He was, accountable. He was very mm -hmm. respectful, mind you, to the king who was not interested in being a, 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 a conduit or a tool for God. Yes. He was interested in running his own kingdom. That's right. <laughs> okay, and Nehemiah was his servant. So when you talked about serving in the secular world, we have a responsibility of accountability in the secular world when we are Christian. Christian. Mm -hmm. We want to show them the love of God, yes, right? And right. we want to show them that God has order too. Yes, he does. But we must be respectful and we must be accountable and we shouldn't go off on tangents. tangents. And if mm -hmm. we don't like the way our boss manages or we think we can do it better, yes. wait your turn. Wait your turn. <laughs> show God that you can follow well. Then he might let you lead. lead. Okay, Absolutely. you might be a good leader if you can follow well. He had to ask for permission, That's Nehemiah, right. yeah. to, to go back to his own mm -hmm. people. That means he's going to leave his post. His post. <laughs> but yeah. he had such respect and honor. It said he was a favored servant yes, by the king. Mm -hmm. He had such respect and honor that the king gladly let him go. Oh, wait a minute. But he didn't let him go. He had to him. ask for <laughs> supplies yes. and resources. <laughs> oh, King, can I have some resources yes. to build? Mm -hmm. I don't have any. That's right. But the King granted it. Yes, he because did. why? 
He was a man of God. Mm -hmm. He was favored. He was favored. And that favor carried out, the, he was able to carry out his task for God's work mm -hmm. because he had been favored in the way that he served, served that the king. king. Yes. Isn't that a beautiful that's story? Beautiful. And that should carry out in the church of God today. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, meeting, they, in this meeting, they do meeting agendas. They plan for church events. We talk about calendars all together. And you should see it. It really can be a funny thing. <laughs> when I want to get on June 5th, and you want to get on June yes. 5th, we have to work it out, don't we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> well, we all want to have our events and our activities yes. on the same date. And, you know, some will speak up for the others. Well, you can't do that. Don't you remember Health and Medical's doing that? Yes. Oh, no, the ushers are having grilling games and the men's <laughs> fellowship, you know. So we really have a good time of fellowship together as leaders. And I'm told that that's not typical of many churches. Many churches. So right. we have been favored by God with beautiful people, people. beautiful mm -hmm. leaders, and we meet regularly with those leaders. Considerate. Yes, yes, yes considerably yes. blessed. Okay, so I'd like to now go to one other example that the Lord gave to me, and I think it's going to speak to us loudly. I want to go to Acts chapter 27, and we're going to look at four leaders. Yes. <laughs> four leaders together. So I have my Bible here, and I'm going to go to Acts chapter 27, and we're looking again at a situation involving Paul, okay, who we've seen as an apostle, but we're going to see him as a gifted leader, gifted by the Holy Spirit of God, and he is now in a situation where there are people who aren't, yes. they aren't governing <laughs> or ruling by the Spirit of God. So let's look at this. Acts chapter 27, I am going to skip around a little bit because it's rather long and I'm not going to take that long. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. okay. So in verse 1, we establish that Paul is a prisoner. Mm. He's not the leader, but he's a prisoner right here. Mm -hmm. So look at it. Mm -hmm. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, mm -hmm. they proceeded to deliver Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion, that's a leader of soldiers, okay, to a centurion of the Augustan cohort mm -hmm. named Julius. So Paul is going, he's on trial, he was defending yeah. himself and defending his ministry and really defending his life before King Agrippa, just yes. before this, mm -hmm. to, to set the scene. And so when he got through arguing his case or defending his case, King Agrippa and the, the Jewish council and the people that were around him said, well, we would let you go. Yes. We don't see you being guilty of anything. <laughs> However, you appeal to Caesar. So now you have to go to Caesar. Yes. Caesar was everybody's leader in the province. And if you make an appointment with that leader, you don't cancel it. That's right. <laughs> okay, you don't cancel it. So he had to keep his appointment. All right. So they get on a ship and they are bound. So let's look at verse 9. Okay. When considerable time, verse 9, 10, and 11. When considerable time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous. Mm -hmm. This is what they are encountering on this trip. It was now dangerous since even the fast was already over. They had been fasting mm -hmm. for a Jewish holiday. Paul began to admonish. There's that word again. Yeah, that's right. To admonish them. What is he admonishing them? He is warning them. Let me see. My page is sticking together. <laughs> okay. And said to them, men, I perceive that the voyage will certainly be with damage and great loss, mm. not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. They're facing a situation, Ms. Dunnigan. A heavy situation. Loss of life and nothing around but water. That's right. <laughs> But the centurion, what did we say? He was the leader of the soldiers. The centurion was more persuaded 
by, look at the other leaders there, by the pilot and the captain of the ship. Also, other leaders there than by what was being said by Paul, than <laughs> what was being said by Paul. So they were going to, to suffer great loss there. But look at verse 12. Verse 12 says, because the harbor was not suitable for wintering, in other words, they couldn't park the mm -hmm, ship the there. Ship. They couldn't park it because it was going to be damaged and because of the winds. Look at it. It says, because the harbor was not suitable for wintering, the majority, now as a leader, uh, there's going to be times where the majority is going to disagree with you and you're going to have to stand your ground. The majority disagree. Yeah. So look at it. Mm -hmm. The majority reached a decision to put out to sea from there if somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing southwest and northwest and spend the winter there. Look at verse 14, 15, and 19. But before very long, your Bible might say shipwreck. Mm -hmm. And say, look out, <laughs> shipwreck is on the way. Paul said, don't sail that way. Mm -hmm. But the majority said, we need to go. Okay? But before very long, there rushed down from the land a violent wind called Eurokilo, or Easter wind. And when the ship was caught in it and could not face the wind, we gave way to mm -hmm. it and let ourselves be driven along. Go to verse 19. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Mm -hmm. It had gotten so, so bad. bad. Mm -hmm. Since neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, they had no light out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been on a cruise. <laughs> have you ever looked out on the sea where there was no light? It's really awfully dark and dark. scary. <laughs> That's how they were, OK? And, and by the way, this wasn't a cruise ship, <laughs> OK? <laughs> it did not have those luxuries at all. Uh, <clears throat> Since neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small storm, mm -hmm. no small mm -hmm. storm. Look at the notes that the Bible <laughs> give us was assailing us from then on all hope of our being saved was gradually exactly. abandoned <laughs> verse 21 so they see now they're in turmoil yeah they're now realizing what paul was saying but look at verse 21 this is paul speaking he says uh, after it says when they had gone a long time without food then paul stood up a leader mm -hmm. you don't have to stand up sometimes yeah to say, well, I, I wasn't on the agenda, but I need to stand up. So then Paul stood up in their midst and said, men, mm -hmm. you ought to have followed my advice. Mm -hmm. You should have listened. And not to have set sail from Crete and incurred this damage and loss. Verse 22, yet now I urge you to keep up your courage. Mm -hmm. That's what the leader has to do. The leader has to somehow get people in unity. That's right. We got to keep people unified on this trip. Mm -hmm. If we're going to make it through, we still got to have everybody on one accord. And, and that's courage. what you need yes. to seek mm -hmm. to do if you're a leader. If, if your group is a group of five or if your group is a group of 50. Mm -hmm. If there is turmoil, if there is tension, if there's problems that occur, the first thing is get the group together. Try to get everybody on the same page. Yeah. Verse 22, yet now I urge you to keep up your courage for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. Mm -hmm. you, your yeah, life's going to be saved, saved. <laughs> okay? Yeah. For this very night, an angel of the God to whom I belong, mm -hmm. Y'all might well, not belong to him, it. but who I belong to <laughs> and whom God. I serve yes. stood before me saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. You on a mission, mm -hmm. and that has to happen. Yes. So therefore, you guys are going to make it. And behold, God has granted you all those who are sailing with you. Ooh, thank the Lord for a godly man. Isn't that right? Amen. So now we skip to verse 33. 
Until the day was about to dawn, Paul was encouraging them. There we see it again. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to do, leaders. Mm -hmm. Encouraging them all, look, to take some food. Mm -hmm. To take some food. The leader has to look around and say, oh, the people are famished. Yes. You know, look at your people and see what condition are they in. Do you care for them? Yes. That is one of the tasks. That is one of the definitions of being a leader. Spiritual leader is you care for the flock. You pay attention to mm -hmm. them. You would know they're hungry if you weren't paying attention to Absolutely. them. And not only are they hungry and they're missed in the storm, he said, open up that food and let's eat it. Mm -hmm. And my husband would do something like that. What you saving the food for? We're going to eat it. If we're going to perish, at least we'd be full. <laughs> okay. Verse 33, until the day was about to dump, Paul was encouraging them all to take some food, saying, today is the 14th day that you have been constantly watching and going without eating, having taken nothing. Verse 34, 35, and 36. Having said this, he took bread. Mm -hmm. Paul did. He led, led out. out. He mm -hmm. went before. Yes. He's in the place before them. He led out and he gave thanks to God in the presence of all. And that's what we have to do mm -hmm. as leaders. Do you know, Ms. Dunnigan, when I was working in the secular world, do you know that whenever we go to lunch, and we went to lunch often, way too often, my <laughs> husband said way too often to be working people. But nonetheless, I'm with a group of secular people, but I would say my grace over my food. Yes. Do you know eventually they said, Gwen, will you say the grace? Mm -hmm. Eventually they asked me to say grace over the food. And if they had any other kind of function that involved God in the place and I was there, yes. they asked me to do it. They asked me to pray. Well, I felt privileged because it brought, brought glory to the God, God. Mm -hmm. not to me. Mm -hmm. It meant that they thought about God and what they were yes. doing. And so Paul does the same thing. He says, gave thanks to God in the presence of all, and he broke it and began to eat. Verse 36 says, all of them were encouraged, mm -hmm. and they themselves also took food. Verse 43, we skip down to. But the centurion, th now let me read verse, 40 verse 42 so you understand. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the soldiers were not to lose any, any prisoners. Prisoner. And mm -hmm. if this ship was going to be shipwrecked and they were going to be dead at sea, mm -hmm. then they were going to kill the soldiers first to say we carried out our duty when we answer to our leader. The prisoners, mm -hmm. the, the prisoners can't, yes. can't live. That's they right. can't get away, <laughs> right? So that none of them would swim away and escape. But verse 43, but the centurion wanting to bring Paul safely mm -hmm. through. You see, he's yes. a leader too. He said, I got to get Paul over there to Rome. You yes. know, he's mm -hmm. got to go get see, uh, uh, he's got to see the king. I mean, he's got to see not Agrippa, uh, Caesar. Caesar. He's got to go mm -hmm. to Caesar. So he kept them from their intention. So because Paul was on there, they all got saved. They got saved. All right. right. <laughs> and they had favor and mm -hmm. commanded that those who could swim, should jump overboard first and get to land. Mm -hmm. And the rest should follow on some planks and others on various things from the ship. And so it happened that they all were brought safely to land. So the point is here is that you don't go with the majority mm -hmm. if you are a leader. And God, through his Holy Spirit, anointed Paul, sent an angel to Paul. He's out in the middle yes. of the water. <laughs> okay, but he speaks to Paul. God will find a way to get, get to, you. to you. That's right. In the situation, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, when you don't see an answer or a plan, then you ask the Lord for his plan. Lord, rescue us, deliver us. How, how can it be done? Mm -hmm. Believe me, I always say the Lord is not limited by the things that limit man, mm -hmm. and he will have a way mm -hmm. for you and everybody else will be saved in order to bring God glory. That's right. You see? So, and also leaders, you may many times remember that you may have the only one with the opinion that you have, and that might be you know in your heart the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the group is saying, we don't think so, we don't right. think so, but in your heart you still got that pulling. 
then you follow that that's right. because that's Holy Spirit that's the Holy leading Spirit. you. They were not spiritual, but Paul was. And what Paul said was going to happen is what happened. That's right. Amen. And God will always direct. God always will, direct. God will your always heart. direct. That's right. And people are always watching you. So you they're always oh, watching to see how spiritual you are. So right. it's very important very. that we remember that we are doing a job for God. For God. And it is for the kingdom of God. Yes. It might not look kingdom. like it. It might not look like it. But you need to know that you are a leader for God. So a keep leader, going. A keep leader going. for God, which leads mm -hmm. to our final and concluding point about servant leaders. Mm -hmm. It is important that everyone in these positions, mm -hmm. positions of administration or leadership, see themselves as servant leaders. No one can effectively lead and motivate others to serve if they are not great examples of serving themselves, yes. as you so describe mm -hmm. the leader of the discipleship and the leader of the hostess. Yes. You so well describe them. Both the Apostle Paul and James, who were bishops of the church at, in the church at Jerusalem, called themselves servants. And you can find that in Romans 1, 1, and James 1, 1. It says, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. He called himself a bondservant. Mm -hmm. And James, it says in James 1.1, 1, 1, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Additionally, it is essential that all church leaders be spiritual people. After mm -hmm. all, you're supposed to be a spiritual leader. That indicates by default you are listening to and living by and in step with and getting your mm -hmm. orders, marching orders, from the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is never going mm -hmm. to lead you. Willie Miss Dunnigan, he no. is never going to lead you on anything contrary to the yes, word of to God. To his word. His word. To his <laughs> word. To his word. That's right. You must be spiritual people who adhere to the principles of leadership found in the scripture. And we leave you with this final mm. scripture in Hebrews 13, 17, which I'm sure has been used many, many different yeah. ways. <laughs> but let's look at it. It says that they will be accountable to God for their oversight. Yeah. It reads like this. Obey your leaders mm -hmm. and submit to them for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief for this would be unprofitable for you. Yeah. So what do we learn here? Leaders must be accountable. These leaders, your leader is going to be accountable to God. Mm -hmm. God is going to judge them with how they lead. But if you are the one that is serving that servant, then he's also going to judge you. Yes. So it is not profitable for you to make their job hard. That's right. And we <laughs> have the groups in this church that do not make our jobs hard. And for that, we are Grateful. grateful. <laughs> and we are yes. thankful. Yes. We hope you benefited by this, although short, but we hope adequate to give you insight to what the gift of administration and spiritual leadership is like in the church and how it differs mm -hmm. from spiritual leadership outside of the church. In the church, you should be cared about and you should know that you are cared about. You should know that the leader is trying to reach a goal. They're trying to complete a task, but all of it to bring glory to God. You can't have egos involved. Get your ego out of the way. You need to pray and you need to be humble because if not, that will take you low. That pride will be a falling for you. 
So we hope you enjoyed it, and we say God bless you in your leadership. Share the broadcast with somebody else, and we thank you so much for joining us again. God bless you. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You've been watching the Berean Perspective. Be blessed for God is with us.